So, you have a movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. This one's gonna be called Soul. Oh, pretty reliable subcompact crossover SUV. Okay. That's not, no, we're gonna follow this guy named Joe Gardner, right? Does he work for Kia? Not that kind of soul, sir. So Joe works as a music teacher and he gets offered a full-time position. Oh, good for him. No, it's not. Oh. Because he dreams of being a jazz musician and he has an audition to be in this legendary jazz band. Okay, so that's a bad stable job offering. Okay. Yeah, and he does this audition and he just does great. So he gets a chance to perform later that night. Oh, good for him. That's great news. Yeah, so that he's walking home, he's all happy, and he dies. What? He dies. He falls into an open manhole and he's, he's deceased now. He's a dead guy. What do you mean? Well, he fell and died immediately, so probably some head trauma, something like that. I, maybe his neck snaps. He dies immediately, so it's gotta be pretty traumatic, you know? Dead on impact. Oh my god. Yeah, and so his soul's on this conveyor belt thing now because of the fatal trauma. Right, okay. What is happening? Well, he's a dead guy now, and his soul's headed to the great beyond, so he starts freaking out. Yeah, understandable. And there are a bunch of other souls on their way there, too. Just anyone who died on Earth in that instant. Well, they must all be freaking out. No, literally all the other souls are cool with this. They're all just pretty much chilling. Not one other soul is freaking out about being dead. No, sir. And so Joe is panicking, but he's stuck on this conveyor belt thing, and it's moving. Well, it's gonna be tough for him to get out of the afterlife system for bringing people to the great beyond. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, see, he just kind of pushes through this force field barrier thing and he escapes. He just pushes his way out? He does, yeah. And so then this soul counting accountant, Terry, is like, hmm, that's weird. The soul count is off. That never happens. So nobody that's ever died has panicked and tried to push their way out. Yeah, no, guess not. So then Joe falls into this place called the Great Before. And what's that place? That's this place where these Picasso drawing soul counselors prepare souls for life on Earth by giving them personalities. It's both very peaceful and hauntingly disturbing. Oh. So Joe finds out about this thing called the Earth Portal, where the souls can go once they have their Earth Pass. So what does Joe do? Well, he pretends to be a mentor, which are these people that help souls find their spark, which is what they need to get an Earth Pass. Okay. So he goes to this orientation seminar, and he learns all about how souls are given their personalities. Like, one of them is a manipulative megalomaniac who's intensely opportunistic. Why would this place intentionally make people like that? Unclear. So then Joe gets mistaken for this Nobel Prize-winning child psychologist because he took his name tag. So what happens to that doctor's actual soul? Probably best not to think about that. So Joe gets assigned this soul named 22. And what's 22's deal? Well, 22 doesn't want to go to Earth, and none of her famous mentors have been able to help her find her spark. Oh, famous mentors, huh? Yeah, like she's had Mother Teresa, Abraham Lincoln, Marie Antoinette, who is just ahead, by the way. Because she was decapitated? Right. So souls carry their fatal wounds with them? Does that mean that Abe Lincoln has a big hole in the back of his head? Oh, yeah, I guess gonna be a fun cutaway gag though. Oh, cutaway gags with horrifying implications are tight. Anyway, so then they go to this place called the Hall of Everything to try to find 22 Spark. Okay. And Joe tries to give her some pizza, like maybe she'll be into cooking or baking, but she can't smell or taste it. So she's like, meh, she can't taste or smell. Now see, the whole place is like hypothetical, so senses don't exist. But they're looking at each other, right, using their sense of sight? Dang it. So anyway, then they go to this place called The Zone. And this is where people go when they get into like a flow state or if they're meditating. Oh, interesting. And so they go talk to this guy Moonwind who's in there. And how did he get there? In a way that hopefully only parents will understand. Gotcha. And so his body is actually physically in New York, just a couple of blocks away from where Joe's body is. He could have been anywhere on the planet, but he's a couple of blocks away from them. Yeah. That works for me. Okay, thank God. So then he does this ritual thing, and then this is gonna turn into a body swap comedy for quite some time. What? Yeah, Joe's soul goes into a cat's body and 22 goes into Joe's body. Well, what happens to the cat? Oh, well, we're gonna cut away and show that the cat's soul is headed to the great beyond, so it's gonna be pretty funny. The main characters just killed a cat, but in a funny way. So then Joe and 22, they start freaking out a bit. Isn't Joe's body, like, severely injured? No, he's all good now. But he fell so hard that he died. Well, technically his soul is in a holding pattern, but yeah. Right, so he's gotta have, like, a cracked skull or a broken bone. No, he's all good now. Okay. So then they go see that conveniently placed Moonwind guy and he's like, I can do a ritual to put Joe's soul back into his body before the big jazz show tonight. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Wow. Yeah, and so then Joe, as a cat, tries to give himself a haircut, but he messes it up because he's a cat. Why would he try to do that? I don't know. The guy wears a hat all the time. I'm just filling up some screen time. Oh, okay. And then later he rips his pants, so he's got to get his pants fixed. And that... Just kind of filling up the midsection of this movie. I don't know. I feel like that great before play sounded really interesting. Maybe we could spend more time there. Yeah, no, instead we're going to spend a lot of time on this body swap haircut pants ripping thing. Well, okay then. Anyway, so 
eventually it's time for them to go back to the great before, but now 22 likes being on Earth. Oh. But then they do go back and they realize that she has her Earth Pass now. Oh, so her spark was living on Earth? Something like that, yeah. So then Joe uses the Earth Pass to go back into his body. Oh, good for him. So he does his jazz show. He does, and it goes great, but then he feels empty inside. Oh, uh, same Z's. Yeah, he thought it was supposed to be his purpose, but then he looks at all this random stuff that 22 collected when she was him, and he realizes that enjoying life is what's important. Nice, nice, nice. So he plays some jazz and gets back into the zone and tracks her down. Oh, he does. Yeah, and then he basically sacrifices himself so she can go down to Earth and live a life. Oh, a very generous sacrifice. Right, and now he's back on that conveyor belt elevator thing, and now he's at peace. Wow. And then one of those soul counselors pops up and is like, hey, we decided to give you another chance on Earth because you were inspiring. Oh, we're kind of backing away from that sacrifice. Okay. Yeah, well, it's a nicer ending this way. That's true, and it is an important message overall. Yeah. Wait, what do you mean? Well, I think it's important for kids to understand that, you know, their loved ones that died, first of all, didn't try hard enough to come back and also weren't inspiring enough. Oh, that's not a very nice message. Okay, so what do you think? Well, it sounds like an interesting movie. I'm just kind of wondering what happened to the body of that dead cat. All right, well, actually, when Joe goes back into his body, we're going to see that the cat is back, too. What? I mean, they say the cats have nine lives, so it, it kind of works. So we're saying that whenever a cat loses one of its nine lives, its soul is replaced by a completely different soul? Uh... Like, the body keeps living, but the soul is just replaced entirely. Oh, please stop finding horrifying implications in my cutaway jokes. Are we going to explain the nine lives thing, or the cat's just going to be alive again? The second option. Feels like people are going to have some questions about that. I don't think so. But maybe, but probably. Well, if they do, we can explain it online or something, but they're going to get it. Hey guys, Ryan here. Thanks for watching that pitch meeting. I hope you liked it. If you did, you know, press the like button and the subscribe button and leave a comment and all the YouTube standard things. Also, let me know if you have ideas for other movies I should do pitches for. As always, check back soon for a new video. Bye bye <laughs>